So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat while I tell you about The Valley of the Alchemists by Creative Maker LLC. Now, this is a prototype copy I've been playing because the game is now seeking funding up on Kickstarter. But I can tell you a bit about the game. This is a game of set collection and engine building. It's a very light, easy to play game. On your turn, you'll pick two actions out of five possible actions. One of those actions will be to take ingredients. The number of ingredients you get depends on your level in that ingredient. With these ingredients, another action you can do is to trade those in to take decoctions. So this is basically like a colour puzzle almost, you know. Two reds make a red. A red and a blue will give you a purple. You know, it works that way. And then you also need to add in some water. So everything always needs free ingredients. And you can build up lots of ingredients and do a lot of decoctions at once. Or you can just build up what you need and just get the decoctions you need. It's up to you. But then once you've got these decoctions, you're going to use these to get these elixirs. And the elixirs need certain colours of decoctions. Now, typically they'll need between one and two, but then you also have these mighty wild elixirs that require each of the different decoctions, which is six different decoctions, but they're wild. Well, what are they wild for? Firstly, what elixirs give you is the points on them. Those are victory points towards winning. But the other thing that they give you is you're able to put them in your elixir chest. And this is another kind of form of set collection, but with a spatial element, because your chest is a nine by nine grid and you're putting these cards in it and you're trying to create lines, but you don't know exactly what's gonna come out in this deck. So you're trying to position these in order to get the most optimal lines that you possibly can. And the lines have to be straight lines, giving you a total of free elixirs. Once you've got that, you're then able to sell these elixirs using a form of set collection. You see, when you sell these, you'll get bonus points represented by these tokens here, which is more points at the end of the game, as well as what the elixirs are worth. And that's another action you can do, of course, selling them. But what happens if you put them in the wrong place? Well, you can use an action to move them. But when you do sell, there are three different kind of attributes that you're collecting sets on. Now, you could just have a set of one attribute, you could have all three attributes match, and you get extra bonus points. For each one that matches of level, which is the number of decoctions needed to create it, shape and colour, you'll get a different number of bonus points. At the end of the game, whoever has the most points, both on their elixirs that they've got in their chest, that they've sold, and in their bonus point tokens, will win the game. Another thing I've not mentioned, which is how the kind of engine building aspect of this game works, is when you buy an elixir, not only is it giving you points and helping you create sets of elixirs to sell and get even more points, but it's also helping to build your engine. Because depending on the elixir you build or you buy, you'll increase the level of different ingredients. And as I said earlier, collecting ingredients, the number you get depends on your level. So as you buy more elixirs, your level goes up and you're more easily able to buy more elixirs because rather than using six actions in order to get six ingredients, you now do it in a single action. And then you do a ton of decoctions and a ton of elixirs. So in this way, the game has a very much accelerating aspect. It starts off quite slow and it takes its time to get your engine going to build up. This is a light game, it's a forgiving game. These elixirs are gonna be different each game, it means you can't just plan out and go, I know exactly what elixirs there are gonna be. It's very interesting. Now, you're probably wondering where player interaction comes in in this game. This is very much a low player interaction game. If that doesn't appeal to you, then you're not gonna like this game. The interaction comes from the race to get these elixirs. You'll be looking at them and you'll go, right, well, I want that one, I want that one, and I want that one. 
and you go, which one do I want the most? <laughs> which ones are they going after? What, what are they building up? What, what ingredients have they taken? What decoctions have they got? What are they likely to be buying that won't be there for me? So you're making sure that you're collecting the right things to be heading to things that will be there. Or you're going to have to change your plans part way through. That's where the interaction comes from. So as you can probably guess by the way I'm talking about this, I think this is a lovely game. I really enjoy the lightness of it. I really enjoy just sitting and playing this with my wife. I think the fact that it has randomness with these elixirs gives it a great amount of replay value. But at the same time, it does have a bit of sameness about it. All that's really going to change is what elixirs you're going for. You can try different strategies though of building up lots of ingredients early on and getting your elixirs that way or just getting elixirs early on, cheap ones, just to get up your ingredients, to get your level up on your ingredients and go for it that way and go for a later scoring game. It's interesting and I like it. I think it will very much appeal to people who have enjoyed uh, Splendor and Century Spice Road, these quite light, accessible, easy to play games that have a bit of engine building there with regards to what you take will help you later on in the game, but at the core of them what they are is about the set collection. And that's the case with this. So what else is there to talk about? Well, scaling, as you can imagine, this game scales perfectly fine. That low interaction means the only thing that really can change with regards to scaling is the, com the kind of conflict over these. The market size stays the same, but that doesn't cause any problem because of the fact that the market fills up at the end of each turn. It doesn't matter how many different players you've got, you're still going to have the same pool of cards to buy from on your turn. Also, the number of cards you've got in total is going to increase. So what you'll find is the game will play from an individual perspective exactly the same, or near enough exactly the same, no matter the number of players. But it will take longer the more players you have. Another kind of interesting thing with the more players you have is that when there's just two players, You've only got to account for what one other person is doing. What one other you can see one other person is going after yellows. Just avoid everything yellow and you're fine. But if you've got up to four players and like they're collecting greens, they're collecting yellows, they're collecting reds, it starts to become much more difficult and interesting. Now, this will either appeal to you or not appeal to you. I personally think it's just different and I like it either way. And finally, I did say at the beginning of the review that this was only prototype components, but I can tell you that as part of the Kickstarter, the decoctions are not going to be wooden discs, they're going to be plastic bottles. And if you back the exclusive collection set, then you'll be able to get metal coins for your experience point markers. There's also going to be an expansion available, the Ghost expansion, which is going to introduce a fifth player. It's going to introduce Dragon Contest module, which is these like objective cards that players can complete and will get benefits for doing so. And then also companions, which are going to allow them to interact directly with the other players. So that is my thoughts on Valley of the Alchemists by Creative Maker. Do you hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful? If you have, please do check out the rest of my videos as well as subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.